Hi, I'm CB, and this time I'm going to talk about the cloning tools, the healing brushes, things like that. There are three main ones, I think, that are in both Photoshop and Photoshop Elements, and that's the spot healing brush, the healing brush, and the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to talk about the clone stamp tool first. It's the one that looks like a little rubber stamp, and it works kind of like uh, the little picture would imply, where I'm going to take some pixels from one area and just stamp and brush them onto another area. There's not going to be any blending involved. The first thing I like to do when using this tool is to copy and work on another layer, so Control or Command plus J, Command plus J if you're using a Mac, Control plus J on the uh, PC, and work on that layer instead. So I have that tool selected. The first thing to do is tell it the area I want to pull pixels from. This is a really good tool for using for things like grass, and in this case sand, because there's a randomness sort of about those two things that it requires no real blending. It's just you can move pixels from one area to the other without blending, and it, it still looks kind of natural. So I'm just going to click up here. I'm holding the Alt key, or that's the Option key if you're using a Mac, up here on the top on normal, well, not normal sand, but, you know, clean sand, I guess. And I'm going to work on cloning out this leaf right here. And all I have to do is just start painting over the leaf. If you look up there, you'll see that little plus sign or the crosshair that shows the area I'm pulling pixels from. Again, because of the randomness of sand, it's it doesn't really matter almost, except that I would probably not have used this little the, there. I'd get rid of it because it looked a little weird to have that there. So here's before and here's after. And you see there's really not something too unnatural about that because of, as I said, the random nature of how sand looks. It doesn't need any blending. That looks pretty good. So let's talk about the next example here. I've got one of my daughter and I'm going to talk about the spot healing brush next. I'm going to copy this layer off again and choose the brush, which right now I have the healing brush picked. To get the spot healing you just hover on it uh, well not hover, but click on it and hold and then spot healing will, is one of the choices. So you zoom in pretty good here to get a, into the area you want. My kids tend to get food on their faces, you know. If you've got a blemish, this works great for blemishes too, to pull out. And what this will do is, I don't have to define a source point, all I have to do is take the area that I want to get rid of, it looks kind of at the center of the brush and says the center is the abnormal part I want to fix, the stuff around the edges and the outside are the parts I'm going to blend and pull pixels from to fix it. So all I really have to do is just tap on it once, you see, and it, it just gets rid of it pretty easily. And sometimes if it doesn't do it right the first time, try undoing and going back. Just make sure that whatever area you're wanting to use it from has a lot of clean area around it. In this case, there was a lot of you know, decent looking skin. If I tried to clone too close to this lip, for instance, if I was doing something in here, well, that didn't show off too bad, but it can it can make things look a little bit wacky if you're if you're not too careful with that brush. So let's talk about the third brush, and that's the healing stamp. And again, I'm going to have to hover back in here and, and get that out. And what have I done? I went to path somehow, and also I didn't copy my layer off correctly. There. Okay, <laughs> not what I intended to do. Now my kids have under eye circles thanks to their dad, so occasionally I go in and I have to fix that, and I use the healing brush on this. Probably zoom in a little bit more. This is not a bad example of under eye circles, but if we talk about under eye circles, wrinkles, the healing brush is good for that. Just like the clone stamp tool, you're going to have to tell it where you want to pull pixels from, and I'm just going to go down here to the cheek where it's nice and clean and nothing really happening, and then start painting just like you would with the clone stamp tool. The difference is this is going to also blend with pixels around it. And you'll see when I let go, when I stop scribbling, and I unclick my mouse there, you'll see the hourglass comes up and it, it starts to do its little blend job. And that turned out pretty good. I might go in again and, and try to fix in here a bit more. I'm doing this pretty quickly here. So here's before and here's after. Now I'm not doing a perfect job here because I'm in a hurry, but um, that's pretty good I'd say. The final thing that I would recommend when you're talking about wrinkles, under eye circles, stuff like that, things that exist on a person normally and it would look a little funny to have them completely gone. Since you're working on a separate layer, just lower the opacity of that layer somewhere around 60, maybe 70, it depends on what you're doing and, and what you're looking for. So here's before and here's after, and it's just softened it up, but it's still, it's still there a little bit, you know. So it still has a bit of a natural look to it. 
that's the reason for putting it on its own layer and lowering it is so you can make it look a little bit more realistic. I'm CB. I hope that's helped you learn a little bit about these three great brushes, and thanks for watching.